In this video, I'm going over a few tools and tips for confrontation. I'll start out by giving some language that's useful for confrontation, but to apply that language well, you kind of need to have a few things about boundaries in your mind ahead of time. To begin with, here's some language that I think it's useful to use. I'll explain this more fully in a couple of minutes. This is happening with me. What would be helpful from you is, I am feeling X about this situation. What I could use from you is, I would like this from you, or else I will need to. Those are the three statements that can be tools when you go into a conversation where you're trying to negotiate for yourself something that you need from someone. However, it's important to go into the conversation with a few things in mind. The first two tips go together as a pair. The first tip is to focus on specific actions that they can control. And second, avoid telling them how to think or how to feel. These two relate to boundary issues. Inside our skin, which includes everything inside our head, and it includes our emotions, the chemicals running through our bodies, those are things that are not within your reach. And asking for things that's, that are inside their head is not a healthy thing to ask for. Part of this has to do with the fact that there's no way for us to verify what's going on in their heads and what, what they're feeling. So if we try to infer that from their behavior, we may be wrong, in which case we'll get into a fight about what's going on inside their heads, and that is not a constructive fight. There's not really a good or healthy way of resolving that kind of fight. This is also important because we don't have full control over our thoughts, and we definitely don't have control over our feelings. So asking people to think something different or feel something different is just not a reasonable ask. You can't directly change what you think or feel, and that's private to you. So good boundaries in these conversations means letting them think and feel what they want. What's on the negotiation table should just be their behavior and your behavior and your relational space. Now, given that you're negotiating behavior, not thoughts and feelings, it's important for that behavior to be something in their control. And oftentimes when people come to the negotiation table with unreasonable demands, they haven't thought carefully about what the other person can actually control and not control. Thinking about that ahead of time can save a lot of heartache. The third tip here is to keep the negotiation table open. What this means is you have something that you would like from them. It's something that will help you. But they have other considerations that you may not have thought of. So asking for someone to change their behavior is really a negotiation table. They may have needs that need to be negotiated. Um, dictating something to someone else is not going to go over well. Requesting it and being open to negotiating something that will work for both of you is really the best approach. And in a lot of ways, this is an attitude thing. Approaching the person, approaching the request, approaching the confrontation with, um, with an attitude that you're not dictating, you're really trying to negotiate what you need and also considering what they need and being open to, uh, being open to new information that you hadn't considered before, that's just a respectful thing to do. The next tip is to avoid vagueness. And this goes along a little bit with the first one. It needs to be an action they can control. An example of vagueness might be, I need you to be more open-minded. What does it mean to be open-minded? That's actually a fairly vague term. Rather than asking for open-mindedness, you could ask for specific behaviors. For example, when I bring up a new idea, it would be helpful for me if you would ask questions and uh, reflect back to me your understanding of what I'm saying before you start in with critiques. In which case, it give, gives that space where they're learning more, and that is what open-mindedness is, or at least those behaviors are going to be associated with open-mindedness, rather than open-mindedness, which that's really something inside their heads, which you can't really see, and it's, it's also vague enough that they may not know how do I actually implement that. Focusing instead on specific behaviors will make people less defensive and make whatever you're asking from them more approachable. The next tip is to keep it short and light. 
You may have experienced a situation where someone brings up an issue that you had no idea they were upset about and they go on and on and on and it becomes apparent that they've been perseverating with resentment toward you over this without talking to you about it. And they just sort of keep hitting you over the head with all of the many reasons why your behavior is wrong. And that can feel really unfair. It can feel like, why didn't you tell me this earlier? Or why, why are you um, throwing all of this resentment at me right now? That is intimidating. Rather, approaching things where you say as little as you need to and give the person an opportunity to change their behavior before going on a long rant, which they're going to experience as shaming. So keeping it as light and as short as you possibly can, and of course that needs to be relative to whatever the topic is you're bringing up, but not burdening them with, with shame, really just burdening them with what is the change in behavior that you need from them is a very respectful thing to do. And the final tip here is to be sure to prepare ahead of time to make sure that what you're trying to ask from them is about your boundaries, not about changing their behavior. So boundaries, the definition I use in this channel is it's a budget for your emotional and spiritual energy. Sometimes people's behavior can suck energy from us, can be hard to deal with, and we need to confront like I'm discussing in this video. But that's really about what it's doing to your emotional and spiritual energy, what it's doing to your time, rather than about them and their behavior. So making it really clear in your head why you're doing this, it's about you, it's about your needs, it's not about trying to control them. And if you have that clear in your head, you are not being manipulative. Um, because some people will complain that boundaries and confrontation language can be manipulative. And I agree, it can be used manipulatively. Like most tools, this is a tool, it can be used for good and for evil. If you're clear in your head ahead of time you're, that you're doing this for your own life, for living out your values according to your needs, and that means you need to negotiate something with them, that's very different than you sort of looking out at the world, criticizing people in your life, and trying to control their behavior instead of addressing your own behavior. And the process of doing this will actually um, force you to think about what are you doing to make this situation more difficult. It's a self-reflective process. Are you doing everything you can on your side of the fence? Approaching the conversation and showing up, having thought about that, will help a lot. So just to go back to our original language here, the first statement that you can use as a tool is, this is happening with me, what would be helpful from you is blank. This statement is helpful for living out these principles because it focuses the attention on what you need for you to manage your own life and energy and values. It sets you up to give specific actions that you would like from them. It keeps things short and to the point and not vague. So that statement kind of forces you into some of these principles that I've discussed. The second statement is basically the same statement, except it leaves room for you to tell how you are feeling. Because of course your feelings are within your boundaries, there's something that you have to manage, and this means when you're approaching it like this, it's not about you changing their behavior, it's about you doing what you need to do to manage your own feelings. So the second statement is, I am feeling X about this, and what I could use from you is Y. And then the last statement is a little bit stronger. This is where a behavior is a little bit more destructive, and it's a behavior that you need to change from someone else, or else you're going to have to limit your exposure to that person, or limit your exposure to that behavior at the very least. The third statement is, I need this from you, or else I will need to do that. Now, the use of this statement, even though it's stronger, it comes from a place where you've reflected on the behavior long enough to know that you are actually going to have to take protective action for yourself if that behavior doesn't change. That's a reasonable thing, and sometimes it's necessary. So this is just you communicating your needs in a way that's a little bit more finalized, in a way that where there there are going to be consequences for them, but it's not about you imposing consequences, it's about you doing what you need to protect your own 
social, emotional, mental space. So those are just a few tools and concepts that are useful if you need to confront a friend or if you need to negotiate different behavior in another person you're in a relationship with.